welcome back to Thoughts, Feelings, Emotions. I'm your host, Dan Well, and I'm joined with you, as always, by excellent co-host, Danny Fankham. Howdy. You sound delighted to be here. I said howdy. What's wrong with howdy? It's your tone, you know? You just, you know, sound up so upset. Well, howdy there, partner. How's it going? Let's get <laughs> into the episode. Let's start off with, what the F have you been up to? What have you done in the past week that you would recommend? Uh, I've been watching Star Trek Lower Decks, which is a animated Star Trek TV show, and I, I have no interest. I have no interest in Star Trek. I don't know why I decided to watch it, but it was enjoyable. That's good. Yeah, it's uh quite funny. It's got, I guess, Star Trek references. I don't. I've only ever watched the three Star Trek movies that came out with um, Chris Pine in them, uh, and Same. that's about that's about all my knowledge of Star Trek, and. I still enjoyed this show somehow. Oh, that's Even, good. Yeah, I'd recommend it. It's actually quite a lot of fun. Maybe I'll give it a go. Yeah, it's only had 10 episodes and they're like 20 minutes each. It's not that long a watch. Easy done. Yeah. Uh, the other stuff I've been watching is The Great Escapist on Amazon, which is also where I watched uh, Star Trek Lower Decks. Uh, and it's basically Richard Hammond from The Grand Tour and Top Gear of Old and some American guy. Uh, I think from the show where they blow up stuff uh, and prove stuff wrong mythbusters maybe oh yeah yeah, yeah. one of the newer presenters i guess because he's not one of the people i recognize from mythbusters if it is mythbusters um and they're stuck on a desert island and they're trying to survive and they build stupid tree houses and cars and helicopters and shit and it's like kind of educational but not educational and there's a thread line through it where they they've been rescued from the island and they're recapping it and there's two police investigators trying to discover what the fuck went on on that island. Okay. It's all right. It's not the worst thing in the world. And if you want to check out Being Stranded on an Island, you should check out the episode of TBO where we're stranded on an yeah. island. Yeah. Well, we have a lot of fun with the premise of being stuck on an island. <laughs> uh, and then I've basically PlayStation did a wrap up of 2020 where they showed you all your statistics for the year and obviously destiny 2 was my top game with 103 hours was that it it was yeah i didn't really play much that year (laughs) like i think last year was like 250 plus hours i think Um, i was on 180 last year yeah uh call of duty modern warfare 79 hours rocket league 70 hours the total number of games i played were 37 yeah uh total hours of gameplay in 2020 404 not found (laughs) Uh, hours played locally, 209, 59% was that. 165 hours played online, 50, 41%. So I was more more at home than I was online. And then huh. days played, 106. And then I preferred to play on the afternoons on a Saturday and a Sunday. Who would have guessed having a job would interfere? <laughs> no, no, I would have guessed it. I, I thought you'd probably have to be early in the morning on a Monday. Yeah, and then a bunch of other stuff. And I did enjoy the fact that in 2020, I managed to secure a PlayStation 5. They had to put that as a, as an award. I mean, it is a pretty good accomplishment. Not many people... Yeah, it's 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 a big old congratulations, Frankenstein. you got a fucking <laughs> PlayStation 5. You were managed <laughs> to get one. So we're going to acknowledge that you got one. <laughs> but yeah, that, that was basically my... My mom, I also played a bit more Ghost Runner, which is the ninja game where you slice up people and it's super fast paced. Oh, okay. A lot of fun. It's that PS5 yeah. game, isn't it? No, it's PS4. Oh, it's PS4. It's on PC as well. Okay. I can try it out then. Yeah, it's uh, a lot of fun. Uh, well, the only thing I've done this week is I watched Night Stalker. Uh, it's a uh, s- documentary on Netflix about a serial killer in LA in the 1980s. You love documentaries, don't you? I like a good documentary. I can appreciate a good documentary. I this one was very good. Documentary. Quite liked it. I'm not really that fussed about serial killers, though. The only one I'm really interested in is the um, Zodiac Killer. Don't F with Cats was a great one. I, I, is that the one who put a cat in a wheelie bin? Yes. Yeah. Or in a vacuum bag and then sucked up the vacuum. Hmm. That was yeah, I keep great seeing that on Netflix. That was probably actually just... one of... That, like, I mean, what he did was horrible, don't get me wrong, but um, the actual style of documentary they did for that one was very good. That's probably the best I've ever seen. Fair dues. Fair but yeah, dues. I said Night Stalker's a fairly good one, good episode. It you know, it goes into quite a bit of detail. And I'd recommend it. And of course the other thing uh, I watched was One Division, but you have to wait until the fifth of March for the review. Yeah. But very quickly, what was your summary of this episode? Holy shit, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. To sum up in a few words. <laughs> Holy shit, what the fuck. Alright, let's there move on to the next section of why does this exist? So for this week, we've got Spinach taught how to send emails in MIT study that could help warn off climate change. Yeah. 
Uh, it's a bit more clickbaity than it actually is. It's basically that they genetically engineered some plants to have uh, receptors in it that it, um, sort of pick up. Um, why did I use the telegraph? Why does it want me to sign in with a <laughs> free trial? <laughs> this is ridiculous. Um, but yeah, it's basically that uh, they were basically genetically engineering stuff so that it has like receptors in it that when the soil stuff changes it will send data to a computer and it basically yeah yeah, i mean it it seems stupid but it's kind of clever but i said it's clever why you know why does it why does it need to exist but but why spinach (laughs) Uh, I think it's just because spinach is easily modified. Maybe, but yeah, maybe. It bas- uh, they basically engineered spinach with and uh, has the mesophyll single walled carbon nanotubes capable of fluorescing with an intensity relative to the level of nitro aromics taken up by the roots, and then it sends them as an email, <laughs> roughly. <laughs> It's basically just sending data, and it, the email is a fun thing to call it. Um, but it's basically the plant is constantly monitoring the groundwater for traces of certain chemicals used in explosives. So it's, it's currently be it's currently being used by the military because <laughs> any scientific breakthrough is used by the military. Well, you never know; it might help get rid of climate change. Although I think the only way is for all humans to die. But you know. Yeah, well, but we always say the world's going to end. No, it's just the human race that's going to end. Because <laughs> the planet will continue on. The planet doesn't give a shit about us. It no. will just reset. And We're the virus back. of the planet. Yeah, but yeah, spinach can send emails now. It's 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 a thing that is happening. Yep, soon every house plant in your house will send an email to you and say, Hey, I need water. Yeah. Who needs an Alexa when your plant can send all your private data to fucking military? <laughs> Spying on the people with plants. Hey, plant, well. what's my password? What was that? It was my impression of a plant because plants can't talk. <laughs> it sends an email. Yeah, but why would you? Yeah, whatever. They'll implant plants with voices soon. <laughs> and then vegans will be fucked. Because what are they going to eat? They'll have consciousness. Oh, well, they just have to die. <laughs> oh. Anyway, uh, let's go into the next section of stream that movie news into my head. Cue that intro. That we do not have as of yet, but are working on. That we are in the process of making intros. By the time this comes out, it'll be there, so you can cut all of this out. Hopefully. You'd hope. If not, well, we've fucked up, and Dan will have to leave all of this in just to explain the context. <laughs> let's go! Well, right, so the first one. The GameStop Reddit stock, ex- stock saga is being made into a movie. Yeah. So, Would you I see think it? it's being be interested it is produced by one of the people who did like the um the facebook movie i think oh ah. it's it's still being written that's the thing they've just bought up the book that the dude is writing so that they can um yeah it's it's being made it's being look the book is currently being written by ben mesrich uh and it would basically tell the tale of the ragtag group of amateur investors gamers and internet trolls who bought the wall street to its knees um yeah. And yeah, the uh, founding of Facebook, which then got turned into the social network, so um, is what the other dude wrote. So this dude basically wrote the book that then got turned into the thing. I think it's bought been bought by um, Netflix. Oh right, okay. So it'll become a Netflix film. Huh. At least that's what I saw. I don't know if it's 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 MCM. No, it's MGM. MGM is the one who bought it. Right. Um, but they probably will maybe put it to Netflix, depending on how quickly turnarounding this is. Also, GameStop not looking good for people who invested. No, it's gone back down. I think everyone's selling out now. Yeah, they've realised they've Trust- made millions and were like, actually, we want these millions. Yeah, and also there was no way that hedge funds were going to allow it to continue, and they just they broke every rule in the book to try and fix it. So you know. Yeah. Because we live in a fair society. Yeah, everyone loves free trade. Yay! <laughs> yeah, that's that's gonna be a thing that we'll look forward to, and then go back and look at this year and go, oh yeah, because so much shit will probably happen in the next year. <laughs> yeah, yep. Yeah. It's twenty twenty two, baby. Twenty twenty one. Speaking of twenty twenty two, Sonic the Hedgehog animated series is speeds to Netflix. So Netflix along with basically trying to produce every video game adaptation on its platform, is also going to have a Sonic the Hedgehog movie, uh, animated thing. Would you watch which, this? 
Probably not. I, I watched st- the movie. I have not watched the movie yet. I want to watch it just for the it's sake of seeing the movie. Don't. It's it's fine. Jim Carrey's great in it. It's just not a good. It's good for a kids movie. It's got a good song in it. Um, but and it's got some decent stuff. But yeah, that movie was never going to be good. I mean, <laughs> just you got... know, it's, you know, it's a Sonic. What would you expect? At least it doesn't look as bad as it used to. True. I wonder if they'll use that design for the animated series. I hope not, because that is a stuff of nightmares. It's the teeth. I mean, yeah. I think I wonder if it'll tie in, because I know they're doing a second movie, so maybe it will be a tie-in and fill in the gaps. And maybe, maybe. Or continue the adventures, like the Tomb Raider game uh, adaptation for Netflix that's going to continue the games. And uh, then another TV show coming out is there's a Wakanda TV series in the works of Disney Plus with Black yeah. Panther director Ryan Coogler. Coogler. Yeah. I mean, it was inevitable. Black Panther is one of their biggest properties. So why not also make a TV series explaining the day-to-day lives of Wakandan people? What do you think they're going to do instead of having an actual Black Panther? It would just be Michael B. Jordan in prison talking about how fucked up the society is. Ah, and yeah, probably. Be, oh, right. Yeah, and that, that would be it. Because <laughs> why not use Michael B. Jordan's? Although he's dead, so I don't know how... It would just be the dead body. Um, Yeah, I mean, what do you want from a Black Panther uh, TV series? Well, have they want... got a second film? Yeah, it's getting a second film, but they don't know what they're doing with it yet. I suppose maybe, maybe it could be one of the side characters. Yeah, it could be the um, guard ladies. Yeah, like the, yeah, that, that's like a big thing, isn't it? Cause keeping they all, order. They, I think in the story, they um, they go out on missions, don't they? Yeah, well, um, his girlfriend was on a mission with those people in the van, and he jumps in and breaks them out so that he, she can be at the inauguration. Um, yeah, I think it'd be something like that. I'm just... I'm just thinking whether or not if they did a Wakandan TV series, they could have like an invasion. And if they're going to do um, Namor, like Atlantis and stuff in the mm. MCU, they could have like a, the Atlanteans try and break into Wakanda as the TV show premise. And then you could have that as the baseline and then it would tie into the movie or whatever. I don't know. So is Namor a villain or a hero? I keep getting confused. He's anti-hero. He's kind of a douchebag in the comics. Right, okay. Could be interesting. Like, though. Never know. Well, he's, uh, I think from the from what I've seen, he tries to sleep with Susan Storm, or tr- like tries to hit on her a lot Right. from the Fantastic Four. Uh, he hates Wakandans for some odd reason. He is a giant douchebag to a lot of people. Black Panther basically kills him in the comics a bunch of times. <laughs> Just kick him back. Uh, yeah, um, and he has little wings on his feet because okay. they help him swim somehow. Web feet. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, hopefully it'll be good based on One Division. or probably will be good. Yeah. yeah, Marvel seems to have a good track record, so hopefully hopefully they'll continue that. Yeah, I mean, but talking from a... Uh, a, a re- like continuations of stuff, there you go. Because the Cloverfield's getting a new sequel. Basically, <laughs> okay. you've already got. You've have you not seen Cloverfield? No, I've not. Yeah, uh, have you seen any of the Cloverfields? Because there's no. currently three. I didn't. I didn't even heard of it until I saw this. Really? Yeah. So, oh wow. I've heard of the Cloverfield yeah. paradox. Christ. But yeah, basically they're making a sequel to the first Cloverfield movie because all the other Cloverfield movies aren't sequels to the Cloverfield movie, even though they're technically Cloverfield movie sequels. But the Cloverfield thing is a really weird one because. They basically made the first one, and then every other script that is made wasn't a Cloverfield sequel. It was another script that they converted into a Cloverfield sequel. Right. And then this one's an actual follow-up. And the reason why the Cloverfield one was like popular was because it was first, the first, one of the first things to do like found footage. What's like, found footage? Where it's it's like a video recording, and it's from the person's perspective, and it shows you the events from a recorded perspective of someone. Oh. Like the Blair Witch. Where oh. it's like someone's recording all the events and that's all you get Ooh. rather than... Sort of like first person, but not first person. I... Yeah, I know nothing about this. So it's a horror, yeah. is it? Or... It's, sort of a fr- it's sort of a horror thing. It's not scary. Like, I've seen the first one. I've not seen the one with um uh, the bunker one where they're trapped in a bunker. That one's apparently the best one. And then I watched the Cloverfield Paradox because it had the big old hoopla about it being released on the same day as the Super Bowl. Huh. And then everyone went, it's a terrible movie. And I went, it's all right. <laughs> I don't hate it. It's oh, got a bunch of big actors in it. So right. the fact it won't be found footage. Yeah. So the sequel isn't going to be found footage. Ooh. But also, it's I I don't know. It's, I don't think anyone cares about the Cloverfield thing anymore. <laughs> it's ages ago. It's, I don't know what it is. There you go. Yeah. But yeah, new one. But yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a transition. 
Oh, so, also, it's going to be done by the Batman TV series showrunner. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I mean, so we mentioned Netflix show. Um, there's actually going to be a Nintendo. No, 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 no. They rep- oh, they right. were going to do a Zelda Netflix show, but then the show was leaked. And then Nintendo panicked and just cancelled every project that they were doing that was going to be like animated stuff. So it was basically there was going to be one and then the, it got leaked to the public and Nintendo just went, well, fuck your fun and cancelled it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a bit of a bit much, really. Yeah, but it's Nintendo. Nintendo seems to overreact about everything. Like they're just a terrible like company in terms of like getting in touch with people. That'd they're so a... outdated that like... They don't have online capabilities that are good. Like, every Nintendo game sucks for online, even though they have games that are dedicated to online. Like, it's all local play. So right. It, it's, well, it's not local play, but it's your server. It's not Nintendo servers. No Nintendo game has a server dedicated to online. So it's, it's peer-to-peer just, connectivity. Yeah, it's peer-to-peer connectivity. Every Oof. Nintendo game is peer-to-peer connectivity. That's so old now. Like, yeah. Most new games all have servers. But that's everything on the Switch is peer-to-peer. That's so bad. <laughs> Yeah. Also, you have to have that stupid app to be able to list, uh, talk to people in the games because you have to have... There's no voice chat. You have to have the Nintendo uh, phone app to be able to talk to people in-game. That's so stupid. They're so backwards, and yet people love them. <laughs> it's so weird. Well... But yeah, there was going to be a Zelda thing. There's, there was Now there's no longer going to be a Nintendo Zelda game uh, TV show. I mean, I mean, who cares? I know nothing about They've Zelda already tried. anyway. Um, no, ever have I. I've never played one. I know it's a game. I've never really owned it. I've only ever owned a Wii and a DS and a Game Boy. Is Nintendo? And yeah, I had a Wii and a DS as well. But yeah, and I never got a Zelda game. I played. I just know it's a Super green Mario. guy that has arrows. I believe. Also, that's Link, not Zelda. Oh, Zelda is the girl. Oh, yeah. I don't know about Zelda. <laughs> there you go. We taught you something new. <laughs> Excellent. Well. I think that's it for the movie section. Let's go on to We've Lost the Control of the News. Cue that intro. But maybe. <laughs> if, it, if it's there. <laughs> Just put them in. So the first one up is EU is going to rule on Microsoft's 7.5 billion acquisition of Zenimax by the 5th of March. Yeah. Conveniently I mean, the same day as the WandaVision review. And when we, well, yeah. I mean, yeah, for about a month from now. And I yeah. Mean, well, exactly a month from now. Yeah. I mean, not when this comes out. No, when this comes out. You're all right. When we're recording, recording, it's a month from now. Um, But yeah, it's basically going to be whether or not Microsoft is allowed to buy them. And I mean, I hope this doesn't pass, to be honest. Which one's ZeniMax? ZeniMax is the people who own Bethesda. Okay, I thought it was. I just want to make sure. Yeah, this is the big one. This is the one that's basically going to lock all of the Bethesda games behind a Microsoft paywall. Imagine if EU says no. (laughs) They should. Well, what happened then? I mean, like, oh. well, then they won't be able to do it. They'll just have to break it off into smaller parts. Yeah, is it half they, of it then? They wouldn't be able to buy like all of the company. They'd have to split it off, and then some would be independent and whatnot. I guess Bethesda would go independent, and they just get everything else. Yeah, Bethesda all they take Bethesda. The yeah. But yeah, I mean, it it wouldn't surprise me if it they let it go. But it would also surprise me if they wouldn't surprise me if they said no, because I mean that's a lot of money, and we've already had big acquisitions, and it's kind of getting ridiculous that every company is getting bought up by bigger companies. Yeah, like not great, I, really, I, the consumer. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't happy with Disney buying out Fox, but you know that got passed. Yeah. So. Well, maybe that's a good thing to be honest. Fox weren't the best company in the world for um, yeah, creators. It, yeah, I mean Disney's now going to let stuff on their platform, so I mean it's. I guess it's good. Cause yeah. There was there was a while where like it's been a year and you couldn't watch anything R rated or anything extreme. Yeah, it's so weird. They acquired acquired Fox and just didn't do anything with it. What didn't, didn't do anything with most of it? Yeah. I mean, if they jumped dumped it, I guess because it's like licensing. Like the whole reason why um. X Men New Mutants had to go to cinemas because it was pre built into their contracts. Yeah. Like every f- acquis- uh, every acquired property that Disney bought that had already been filmed had to go to cinemas. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah it's good to kind of, I mean, I don't think, I can't think of anything other than Simpsons that went on Disney Plus from Fox. Ice Age. Ice, I the Ice Age. The Ice Age movie. Is that it? Simpsons and Ice Age. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Paying all that money for Simpsons and Ice Age. <laughs> I already saw them on there and I was like, oh, are they own Ice Age now? Okay. Good I for suppose them. they get the X Men films on Disney Plus as well. But... Yeah, but only certain ones and not. Wasn't a lot ones. though for what they paid for. 
Yeah, not the not the good ones. That's the thing. But I um, mean, they had the X Men Two, which I've not seen. Is the only one I haven't seen. But now with a um, Disney Star, it's all going to be on there. Yeah, I mean, but that's yeah. not the news topic. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's still interesting. But yeah, we'll have to wait and see and see whether or not the EU allows it. And well, I mean, well, he's hoping they don't because it would be funny. Talking about things it? not going anywhere. Yeah, Google Stadia is going to be shutting down their game studios. Yeah, I mean, what did you expect? It, yeah, it's Google. They have a track record of just shutting stuff down. There's an entire web page called Google Graveyard where you can look at every so um, many. every project that Google has started that they've shut down, essentially. I wouldn't be surprised I mean, if Pixel gets shut down soon. No, nah, they'll keep Pixel. Pixel do you reckon? Pixel is a good... No, they, they, they do well with Pixel. Yeah, but it doesn't stop them before. Mm, no, I think they'll keep doing Pixel because they love the camera technology and they also have the Android app and it's a better experience if you have Android. That's true. And also the camera software on Pixel is probably better than any other phone. Yeah, well, there are uh, some that do it good as well, but you know. Well, it's, a 12, it's like a really bad camera setup and then somehow it competes. <laughs> yeah the hardware I mean, is so bad like if you actually look at the preview it's such a bad image but as soon as it takes that photo yeah i mean that's the point and so that, yeah. like they can use all that software and they can develop it for their phones and having a competitive edge for making cheaper phones but yeah google is shutting down their internal game studios and they're gonna basically hopefully push all of their like software streaming stuff to other third-party developers and get them on board yeah because also it's always confused me why these big game studios try and make games when because making games is fucking expensive it is re- i mean it's probably up there with making a film also they've never no it's more expensive than making films. is it more expensive yeah like gta was like 200 and no gta uh the well, Destiny one and two was a five billion, uh, five hundred million um, pound de- endeavor. Whew. I imagine like, they made all the money back. Yeah, but they um, GTA was like two hundred and fifty million to make, and or crazy. Like more than that. The budgets go out because it's a lot of people working on it. It's over a long period of time than a movie because it's like eight years or six years depending. Yeah, like so codes are you quite think of how expensive but... Cyberpunk has been. They they made their development costs back, but they had to sell like over a million copies to make it. <laughs> <laughs> you you, it's a very expensive endeavor. Also, it's very difficult to make a game that is popular. Yeah, because you can make a game, and Google did make games, but no one fucking played their games because that true. it's so difficult to make a game that's actually entertaining for people to play. You have to put a lot of research into it. You have to make it very like user friendly and interesting and have complex systems and everything to make it entertaining. And then even big AAA games fail. Yeah. Or you get very <laughs> lucky like Among Us. Yeah. Three people Where working it's... on a really cheap project and then made millions from it. I do think though, I, I did see because they um they they're the people who made hardcore uh not uh, the Henry Stickman game. Yeah. And basically, before Among Us got popular, they released the Henry Stickman collection, which then made a lot of people go back and play the Henry Stickman collection. And then what I think happened was a lot of people went and looked at the studio behind the Henry Stickman game and saw that they had another old multiplayer game. And right. so they started playing that because the Henry Stickman game came out like two or three months before Among Us got popular. Right. So that's ah. my theory. Because everyone, possibly. I saw a lot of people playing the Henry Stickman collection. And then after that, everyone sort of just went on to Among Us. So I imagine what they saw was, oh, they've got another game, so I'll jump onto that. Well, that's my theory, at least. We should probably. And that's a game theory. We should probably go back to the news. <laughs> nah, it's r- rampant speculation on things that may or may not be true. <laughs> back to the news, and while we're on the subject of games coming out, I guess Activision confirms there's another Call of Duty coming this year. Yep. Who would have thought? I'm actually surprised. I'm not. Why are you? They did. They 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 made war uh, modern warfare, and that was their big thing. And they still brought Black Ops war, Cold War out. But there is differences in these games. So Modern Warfare came up was a three year development cycle. Yeah. Cold War was a three year development cycle as well. But yeah. essentially because they took half the assets from Sledgehammer. So Sledgehammer and Raven did all the campaign, and then yeah. Cold Activision. Um, Treyarch only did the multiplayer and the zombie side of things. Mm-hmm. So the game was made done. But then Modern Warfare, what are they going to call it? The new one. I'm assuming it's Modern Warfare 2 or something. Yeah, I don't care. I've gone off COD. Yeah. Although, I... Oh, that's what I'm playing. The new zombie map came out today. Well, yesterday. I'm like, yeah. Recording. And it's good. I like it. But, yeah. Doesn't pick that game. <laughs> 
Yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised. I don't know who the studio is going to be. I imagine it's going to be Infinity Ward. I imagine so, but this is just they basically in a um, investor meeting when yeah we're making another card so and it's coming this year. It will probably come out in November like they always do. It will probably be a base carbon copy of the same game with a different setting. I mean, it's going to have to be probably it's been rushed. Buy it. Yeah, but it will also have war uh, modern warfare integration for warzone and of course it will <laughs> it will break the game like cold war did for warzone i mean the whole of new cods are all integrated with each other that's the idea yep. all three of them warzone modern warfare and cold war all integrated yeah because they realized actually we make more money from the battle pass than anything else and the best way to get more money from the battle pass is to have the same battle pass on all three systems <laughs> mm-hmm. so there we go um well, that's it for the gaming news. Let's go on to tech time. Cue that intro. <laughs> <laughs> that probably doesn't exist. The first topic is lawsuit accuses Valve of abusing Steam market power to prevent price competition. Yes. Basically, the EU is stepping in again. <laughs> um, EU just shutting everyone down. Yeah. Basically, the lawsuit alleges a developer or publisher must agree the price of a PC game on Steam will be the same price as an any other PC platform. Essentially, the lawsuit claims that Steam does not allow developers to price their games lower on other platforms. Basically, you're not allowed to make your game less expensive on another platform. Basically, right. making it so if you sell it on Steam, you have to make it cheap on Steam, making it so that you can't just make it cheaper on another platform. Right. Uh, I don't know why that's a bad thing, but I, I think, think it's just it's... so like so Steam gets more money. I think it. I think it's just because if the dominant store has the price par- party clause and takes a much higher revenue share than other competitors, ah, that's why. Because Steam has the higher... Because if you go on Epic, Epic gives the developers like 85% of the money that they get from the game. Right. And Steam is like 60. Oh. So if... Uh, I think they had to increase it because of Epic's like deal. Because Epic had like when Epic Store came out, they gave like developers like eighty five percent of their profits if they went to Epic in- right. instead. So that's why you got a bunch of developers making Epic exclusive deals rather than going to Steam. Oh, and okay. then and then Steam went because Steam was like fifty percent cut. Yeah, a lot of money. And then me. and then and I think you if your game doesn't make a million. Um, you don't have to pay on the Epic Store. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so you get on there, you can make a million, and you don't have to pay. And then if your game makes a million, you can pay. So it's good for smaller developers, whereas Steam, 50% cut, even if your game's big. So, uh, But then you, uh, the Steam had to increase it to like 60% cut or whatever it is. I don't know what it is exactly now, but it's around 60 to 70%. Um, and so I'm guessing that this is basically going, oh, you can't make the game lower, but we'll stake take more of your price. And that's stupid because they can't yeah. go to uh, Epic and drop the price down and still make more money off of it. Than well, you never Steam. know. It might come back and bite Steam. Yeah, they're looking for a lot of money. Epic could mm. come along and swoop up these people. I mean, it seems to be getting bigger. Yeah, I like Epic Store. It's not terrible. Your free games every week. Yeah, I mean, that's the only... I've never bought anything off the Epic Store. I just use... Actually, I think I bought one thing because they gave you like a £10 uh, discount code. No, I've not bought anything. <laughs> I don't even remember what I bought. I think I bought one thing and that's about it. And it was like, because I got £10 off and it was like five quid. And I was just like, well, this is good. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I mean, it's dodgy practices and hopefully Steam is forced to change it. Okay. Um, <laughs> you seem so confused by this. I'm a little bit. It's been, you know, it's another late week. Long, late week. Long, long, it's long week, late at night. There we go. Words difficult today. It's nine twenty. Oh, it's late. <laughs> How old are you? Um, twenty-one. Cause you sound like a fucking ninety-year-old man. Oh, my hips aching as well. You know, my hips, Move my on. knees are aching. Move on, you old um, dodger. Yeah, I-, I can't think of a single segue. Um. Um, brains, brain company hopes to make Cyborg Monkey play Mind Pong. Yes, so Elon Monkey's brain company. Elon Monkey's, yeah? Elon Monkey's. Elon Monkey's. <laughs> Should we call that Elon Monkey's? <laughs> Elon Musk has, I think they're using the Nano, whatever it's called. Neuralink. Yeah, so the Neuralink to get a monkey to play Mind Pong Ping in the mind. Pong. Yeah. Which is a well, bit weird. 
They hope that they'll be able to. Uh, Elon Musk claims one of his companies has implanted a device into a monkey's brain and hopes to make it play mind pong with another cyborg monkey. The billionaire, billionaire, who's the now richest man in the world, who owns a variety of science-based companies, discussed the augmented monkey in a speech hosted on a private social app, Clubhouse, according to Sky News. During the talk, he revealed that his brain machine interface company, Neuralink, has a monkey with a wireless implant in their skull with tiny wires. Oh Neuralink is using the monkey as a test subject for its technology, something it previously did with two pigs. The ultimate aim of the company is to create a brain-computer interface with current trials focused on potentially using the technology to treat people with brain and spinal injuries. Yeah. I mean, I'm not a great fan of this Neuralink stuff. It's one of my fears. I love it. It terrifies me. Wires in my... Would uh, you get that thing in your head? Yeah. Oh, I, don't, I wouldn't want it. I'm all about body modifications. Oh, ooh, like, Keeps me out. I look forward to the future where we get, like, robot arms and stuff built into our bodies and it's all just there and you don't have to worry about stuff um but the device itself is made up of more than 3000 electrodes that are capable of monitoring around uh, 1000 neurons this is attached to the thread slimmer than a hair the so-called tiny wires musk spoke about huh yeah but yeah you put a bunch of wires in a monkey and is now trying to force it to play ping pong so we're either going to get a robot uprising or we're going to get a Planet of the Apes style uprising. Or both at the same time and humans just get destroyed. <laughs> yeah. I or mean, we could have... They could use the robot... Um, They could use Spot as their horses. Or we could have humans... Sorry, apes versus robots and humans just watch. Ooh, that would be entertaining. I'd love <laughs> a monkey with a knife trying to attack a robot. That would be a sick fight. <laughs> <laughs> you had it here, for, here folks. <laughs> Uh, predicting the future well talking about questionable technology um Mm -hmm. xiaomi have now got me air charging uh this is charging that allows across room so you you can get a a five watt charge across the room um apparently um objects don't interfere with it so you can have like a i don't know like a chair or someone standing between the charging box it works by having different antennas in the phone and it will bounce off the walls and it will convert um the sort of low i think it's microwaves the same as 5g and then it will bounce to the phone and your phone will create energy. Uh, I think the biggest problem with it is very lossless energy. But And it, mm. they're not actually the first one to do it. No, but they're big up in promoting it. <laughs> they are. I mean, it might not even happen, to be honest. It's only really a concept at this stage. Yeah, I'd like the idea, but I still want the... It just shoots a big old electric shock out into the real world, charges up your phone and kills everyone around <laughs> it. <laughs> Unfortunately, it doesn't quite work like that. Um <laughs> I know, but that would be the fun thing. You put your phone in a box in the in a room that's secure, and then it just shoots electricity into it, and it charges your phone. I suppose the idea of this is that, in theory, you could get rid of the battery. If this was charging everything all the time, you'd just always have this connected. Yeah, if you were outside. Or you could have a very it. small battery in there just with reserve power. Um, but I think the biggest problem is just very lossless energy. I mean, it would be useful. I mean, they'd probably do both. They'd have big battery... And then you're just in your house, you have it set up and it just charges in your house and you don't have to worry about wires. And then when you go out and about, you still have a big battery. But it will be interesting. Um, I mean, it is, it's probably going to be a thing. I mean, with Apple taking away charging ports and <laughs> everyone just going, well, we're not going to give you a charging. The thing is, I, the, 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 the fucking thing that pisses me off so much about Apple removing like the charger from the box is that there are people, when you go and buy all the Apple product charges to then charge your phone because it doesn't come with a charger there's more boxes than if you just bought it with the phone i think the point is because their point is an iphone that... have an iphone charger already yeah but their charger is shit it's yeah, but like they, they, five they... mega yeah but it's it's like the that's what they give you anyway <laughs> yeah i know but they could just give you the faster one no 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 no, the... no, no, no. not giving you faster one that's it's my point give you one <laughs> Yeah, that's my point. Because you go and buy the faster one, then you have to buy all the, then you get all the packaging that, that's in that, and then you have to buy their headphones. You have to buy because you don't get headphones anymore because you need to buy their wireless ones because you don't true. get a chart. You don't get an Apple chair, and then it's just you're buying more boxes. Whereas if they just gave it to you, then you wouldn't have to buy more boxes. So that whole environmentally friendly thing is stupid because you buy more <laughs> boxes. You seem very passionate about this cause. Because I fucking hate it. It's so <laughs> stupid. And every other tech company is going to follow. Like, the Samsung ones don't have chargers anymore. To be fair... It's just dumb. If they're not going to put a 5-watt charger in the box... So if they're not going to put a fast charging box, they're just going to put a 5-watt in. I'd rather just not have a charger. Yeah, but I mean, just, it's, 
that's what I'm saying. It just doesn't make any sense. Because the only reason they're taking it out is because they're trying to get people to buy their fast charger. But then you have to buy more boxes when you buy a fast charger. So their environmentally friendly thing is bullshit. <laughs> they just want you to buy more shit. I mean, you're and true. And people are so stupid. It is true. But at the same time, they are also right. by It's saving the environment by not putting another no, firefox charger. Apple's it is. Just... No, it's not. It is. How... I... It's not. If you had, if, okay, I know you don't like iPhones, but if you already had about five five watt chargers, would you want another five watt charger? No. In but fact, pretty much everyone buy... who buys an iPhone has already had an iPhone. Yeah, but if they didn't fucking give you a five watt charger and they just gave you a fast charger, then I'd be more accepting of it. But the fact that they don't, and then they make you go and buy a five watt, a f- fucking forty five <laughs> watt charger or whatever it is, is just dumb. I think it's even worse when they still sell the five watt charger. Also, fix your cables. Your cables suck ass. Apparently, there's, you know, they might, they might be inventing something to fix that. It's called a USB-C one. <laughs> no, 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 no. If you ask any Apple fan, they'll tell you that lightning is better. Yeah, it's not. Get I don't know why it's better, but apparently it's better. But there's more Apple stuff. <laughs> well, we're on the t- topic of Apple, so we might as well carry on with Apple is rumoured to have a VR headset that could cost three grand and feature 8K displays and over a dozen cameras. Yep, and it will come with 150 million boxes all wrapped individually in plastic and they'll have... And you'll have to buy the charger separately. (laughs) Yep. You can guarantee it. I know it's going to happen. You'll have to buy the 8K cameras and stick them all on. Yeah. And you'll have to... 8K display, you'll have to buy that individually. They'll charge a a grand for the headband. They'll make you buy their Apple headphones, the Apple Macs or whatever they are. AirPod Max. That's the one. Stupid name. (laughs) <laughs> and then you'll have to buy the shares in Apple if you want to be able to play any games. And then you'll have to sell your soul to the devil if you want to get online. Yeah, and you have to buy Apple Game Pass as well, whatever it's called. Yeah, Apple suck my dick. Yeah. Pass. And Apple are just going to keep trying to make money. And do you know what? It's probably still going to make money. Yep, and then they're going to make you buy a car because Apple's going into the car business. Apparently they're partnering with like Hyundai or Hunt to do their cars and then Hyundai doesn't get any of the um my, uh, like logo. Like Apple is the only logo on the car. There's no Hyundai badge. Wait, so if they're partnering with Hyundai, it, or Hyundai if you're from America. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> it is, what is in America? Yeah, I know it is, but no. <laughs> Uh, uh, well, usually Hyundai's have got fairly poor build quality. Well, yeah. But that so uh, does that Apple. mean the Apple cars got fairly bad build quality, but they're just going to charge it a really expensive remember. price? I can't remember if it's Hyundai or Honda. Because oh, no, Honda's got a very good build quality. But I think it, uh, it's Hyundai's yeah. got the poor one. Honda's more, more expensive as well. What do you want to know? Because uh, I'm just looking up which one it's going to be. Kia. You're wrong entirely. No, I saw both Kia and Hyundai. Oh, it's Kia and Hyundai. I think Kia are quite cheap cars as well. Yeah. I don't think they're bad, but they're Three, just... They're Apple forward. may be about to invest $3.6 billion in Kia Motors to collaborate on its electric car project. The tech behemoth reportedly plans to ink a deal with the South Korean car manufacturer on February 17th, according to a news outlet blah, 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 via Bloomberg, uh, which plans to launch the Apple car in 2024. Uh, has set its targets on producing 1,000 cars per year, which may later be expanded to 400,000, uh, depending on commercial reception of the vehicle. It's going to be... Uh, oh, yeah, here it is. Kia, not the only option. We had previously reported that company the company was looking at Hyundai Motors to produce the Apple car. Here we go. See, I wasn't wrong. Yeah, that's right then. But they may go with Kia. Yeah, you so. just know they're, like, they're going to... It can be really cheap to manufacture. And then it's going to re- jack up the price so much because of that Apple logo. To be fair, Kia owns... Um, uh, Ferrari, so... And then, when they jack up the price, they'll have all that profit margin and just take all that profit. Yeah. Well, and it will have a built-in headset VR, which will cost you 3000 extra. We're talking about and... making a lot of money, but this man is stepping down for making a lot of money. So Jeff Bezos... Uh, he's still going to make a lot of money. <laughs> Shut up. I'm trying, trying to do some sort of segue. <laughs> well, your segue man who fell off a cliff is the same thing. <laughs> Jeff Bezos to step down as Amazon CEO and Andy Jesse or Jazzy to take over in quarter three. Yep, Jeff Bezos is stepping down to apparently give money to charities, which he's not going to do. And he's probably likely doing this because he knows Amazon's just downhill from here. No, Amazon's just uphill from here. 
Amazon's gonna continue to make money. No, but I mean, point is, they, like, they're, they're it never will gonna crushed every other company. <laughs> they're never gonna peak as much as they did in 2020. I don't think. Oh no, they're still gonna go up because every other business is gonna go under. <laughs> Unless you just keep acquiring other companies. <laughs> Yeah, all all of the companies that are going under at the moment, Amazon will just either acquire them or crush them with the fact that they're still there. And they'll continue to not pay their workforce a decent wage. They'll continue to make them pee in uh, their cubicles because they don't have toilet facilities that are close by. And I've been in an Amazon warehouse. They're fucking huge. <laughs> and once they get drones, even get rid of the delivery drivers, make even more money. Yeah, and then they'll purchase the Apple cars and drive around. Yeah, Just because. Well, um, yeah, but it's it's sad to see Jeff Bezos go. I mean, he's still going to be the executive chair, which basically means he's still going to have a lot of say in the company. He's going to basically do what Bill Gates did, and because the thing is, everyone forgets Bill Gates was actually hated when he was like operating Microsoft. Yeah, and then once he stepped down, he became lovable, and then just started <laughs> donating to charity, and then predicted this coronavirus pandemic, and then everyone hates him because they think he's going to put microchips in your blood when you do a vaccine. Oh yeah, well, of course it's going to happen. You just know it's going to happen. Did you know? But the thing is, if the anyone was going to do it, Jeff Bezos would do it. Yeah. You should be mad at Jeff Bezos for putting microchips in you, because then he can um, monitor your workflow and make you, if you don't clock in and clock out on time, you get docked. I know it's all of them. Like every single tech giant in the company have all got microchips in there. Do you not know? Yeah, I mean, because that you know that's how science works. Mm-hmm. Like right. it's not like we don't have batteries that that are that small and could work under those conditions. Y- yeah, <laughs> we clearly have them. Yeah, <laughs> and it's clearly why we don't use them in our phones. Yeah. Or have batteries that... Yeah, it's it's a fun, fun, fun. Well, I think that's it for all the news topics this week. But we've got the section of Are You a Sex Word? coming up next. So, Danny, you've got a question or a uh, statement for me, and I've got to guess what it means. Dan, are you familiar with the Pokemon Charizard? Charizard? Mm-hmm. Do you mean there's a like, position or the actual Pokemon? The Pokemon I, I'm, Charizard. I'm, I'm not... Are you familiar with the Pokemon Charizard? I know what it is. Okay. I know it's a Pokemon. It's a big... Got it. Yep. Do you know what Charizarding is? Charizarding. Can you take a guess as to what Charizarding is? Well, I'm assuming it's someone dresses up as a Charizard. Wait, what? What's Char- um the Charizard's abilities? Hmm. He's got flamethrower. He's a drag. He's not a dragon, actually. He's a flying type Pokemon. So he's a flying type Pokemon. He's very. That's not a dragon. Um, he doesn't listen to Ash because he's very hard to tame. Right. Um. Yeah. So, I'm assuming you've got something to do with breathing fire. Mm-hmm. Well, hmm. Um, it ooh. involves fire. It involves fire. Yeah. You take... And it's... Also, to explain the premise, whilst Dan has a little think about this, basically, I give Dan a Urban Dictionary sex move, and then he has to guess what that sex move is just by the title alone. And if he gets it close, I give him a point. If he doesn't get it close, he doesn't get a point. I'm really struggling with this one. Would you like a clue? Yeah, I need a clue. I need a clue. It revolves using a body part, or not body part, a body product, and then doing something with that body product on something flammable. So I'm assuming you're you're jacking off onto flame. Mm-hmm. You're jacking off into a flammable alcohol, and then you put out the alcohol and then drink it. That's not sexual. <laughs> We're jacking I mean, it's off sort into of sexual. Of course it is. Well, that's, that's a sexual part. Um, you were closer when you just said jacking off onto a flame but um do you want to have another guess no i'm i'm i'm, I'm stumped i can't think of anything okay charizarding whilst having sex with a girl with pubic hair light her pubes on fire as you ejaculate your semen will put out the fire uh, of the burning hair and then afterwards while she is flapping her arms of about wildly screaming you don't have you you scream you don't have enough badges to teach me and run out of the room <laughs> I would totally have given the chick a Charizarding. I would have totally Charizarded, um, but I didn't have my lighter on me. Okay. So it's basically you set the girl's pubes on fire, you usually come to put out the flames, and whilst she's panicked, you shout, you don't have enough badges to train me, and you run out the room. (laughs) That's not disturbing in the slightest. Yeah, but that is Charizarding. (laughs) All right. Well, thank you for that one. You're welcome. And we'll leave it there. Thank you for listening. I'll give you half a point because you did sort of get use your cum to put out a fire. So I'll give you half a point. Yeah, okay, yay. I'd, I'd push on, I'm not keeping track of this, but... <laughs> no, I don't even remember what you're on. I think you're on like three and a half at this point and then maybe negative two. Excellent. 
Correct well, me in the comments. <laughs> thank you for listening to the podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the end of the show. I hope you enjoyed. It's time for us to start plugging shit. Dan, do you want to hit us off? So check me out at twitch.tv slash what is about time and check Danny out at twitch.tv slash Frankenstein. You can also check me out at Frankenstein on Twitter and Frankenstein Gaming at YouTube. And if you want to know how to spell it, it's F-R-A-N-K-C-O-M-S-T-E-I-N. And if you want to send in comments or emails, you can email at us at T-F-E pod at gmail.com and also leave a review like comment subscribe and if you want more excellent is that about it then yeah that's it lovely and bye bye everybody <laughs> are you gonna do your normal you gonna do your normal peace out or peace out bitches there you go i added a bitches do i i always sometimes just say bitch no peace out fuck man you gotta leave all this in. <laughs>